I'm here today because the Trump administration places a high priority on the Western Hemisphere, its security, its prosperity, and its freedom. And we recognize that the United States must reassert our leadership in the hemisphere. I have seen time and time again at the United Nations that when the United States fails to lead, we suffer and the world suffers. This is even more true in our relationships with other nations. There is no substitute for strong U.S. leadership based on our values of political and economic freedom and respect for human rights. I will start this afternoon by stating something that should be clear to everyone here today. The prosperity of the United States is critically tied to the prosperity of the hemisphere. Our future is bound up with our neighbors. Among other things, we are each other's largest and best trading partners. The United States sells more goods and services to our neighbors in the Western Hemisphere than we do to China, Japan, and India combined. While a lot of attention is placed on issues of trade with China, we should keep in mind that we trade nearly three times as much with the Western Hemisphere as we do with China. We are also dependent on each other for security. Stopping drugs, gangs, and terrorists from crossing our borders begins with deterring threats before they reach the border. And the principle that ties it all together is something else the United States has in common with most of our neighbors in the hemisphere, a commitment to freedom. When he spoke to the Summit of the Americas in Peru last month, and again at the Organization of American States yesterday, Vice President Pence called the Western Hemisphere the Hemisphere of Freedom. That's a great description of the Americas. The Western Hemisphere is increasingly dominated by countries that share our political and economic principles. The great human rights activist, Natan Sharansky, had a test for evaluating the freedom of societies that he called the town square test. According to Sharansky, if someone can walk into a town square and express his or her views without being arrested, thrown in prison, or beaten, then they lived in a free society. If not, they lived in what he called a fear society. As we look across the Americas, it's pretty easy to tell the free societies from the